So, <laughs> how good did that feel? Um, probably the best punch I've ever thrown. Yeah? Yeah, it feels unbelievable. Is that something you thought he'd be susceptible to? Um, yeah, Manny Gambirian actually did it back in the WC, and he was in the locker with me just right before you know his fight with Cole. He's telling me, you know, he's gonna go this way, just throw you know the uppercut, and you know it landed. Yeah, there was a little bit of crossover between a few of you guys fighting each other, trying to avenge something. You know, did you guys have a few you know laughs about that, or I guess you shared some 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 insight? Um, you know, not really some insight, but we were all joking around at the medicals. We we're all in line together. I was like, well, I fought you and you, you fought him, and you know, playing the matchup. Like, wow, there's a lot of us. So small uh, featherweight division all linked right. up. Right. What was it, Steve, that you were looking for before you let that uppercut go? Um, just avoid the takedown. I know how strong Mike Brown is and how good he is and how relentless he is with the takedown. And uh, we've been working, you know, the takedown defense. And a lot of I've read, you know, I read the MMA reports and everybody told, um, they were saying how Darren Elkins set the blueprint and have a horrible uh, takedown defense. And I just got to show him that was just a bad day. Well, well, he's been around forever and he's so highly regarded. What does that mean to you to get a victory over somebody like him? You know, it, any win's actually a big win, especially a finish. I'm so happy to get a finish, and I finally, you know, hopefully made an impact in the w, in the UFC featherweight division. You're, you're now five and one in the division at this point. Do you feel that your next fight is going to be a, a real step up at, at 145, and that people are now taking notice of Steven Siley? You know, I always I always hope for a bigger fight, and I feel like I got that this fight with Mike Brown. You know, I felt that was a step up from the rest of my competition, so mm -hmm. I always hope to keep building my way up. Let's talk about Chad Mendez. You fought him in the past. Is that yes. somebody that you'd like another shot at? You know, not even right now. I love Chad. He's actually a good friend. I We, we hang out all the time with, uh, we have the same sponsor, and I love Chad, but, uh, you know, he's number two in the world. I'm not in the top ten right now, so i got to work my way up, and we'll see if I ever get to that top echelon the featherweight division. When uh, when Brown came at you with the wild right, was that just him trying to set you up, and that's when you saw an opening? Um, we planned on him coming in hard, you know, the whole time with that overhand to the takedown. That's what I went over over and over again for the, you know, six, seven weeks I had noticed for this camp. So we knew what he was going to do. We just tried to make sure I, you know, timed it right. Steve, who did you bring in to sort of mimic Brown's style? His, you know, his wrestling and his power. Who are the guys you sparred with specifically to get you ready for him? Um, the biggest guys I probably trained with the most in Utah are uh, Radley Martinez, who uh, fights in Bellator. He was in the tournament. He actually got married today. Congratulations. And uh, also uh, UVU wrestler Brad Darrington. He's actually a lot bigger than Mike Brown, but he's relentless Mike Brown, like Mike Brown. So uh, those are the two guys I mostly went with. And... Uh, you know, we also worked with Antonio Banuelos and a couple other guys from the pit in California. He looked like for a moment that he sort of kicked his way free after he'd gone his back, but did you feel like he was already sort of on his way out? No. That? Once I hit him, man, I saw him come to, I finished, I figured I was going to have to keep going from there. And uh, he, like I said, I just wanted to pound his head till he went out cold, and luckily he did. Now, any time it stops that fast, it sort of is shocking. But uh, did, you, did you feel like that was the right Oh, yeah, he was out. I mean, I... I definitely saw his roll, his eyes roll in the back of his head, and he was done. I even tried to, you know, not do that last right punch because I saw he was out cold, and I didn't want to hit him anymore. You walked by him, uh, I guess, while they were trying to figure out where they were too soon. What did you say to him? You know, um, I, I, I said, I'm sorry. I know it sucks. I don't want to lose, and you know, I felt bad because, um, it, it, like I said, it's never fun to lose. It's never fun to lose, and I feel bad for the losers, even though I really want to win more than anything. So I know you're a bit of a family man. How do you process this win, you and your wife? How you know what does this mean to you and your family? Um, you know, we actually just moved into or built a new house and moved in last week. So that's what I've been doing this whole camp is you know moving into the new house. And luckily, my teammates did all the moving for me, and I just kind of sit back and relax. Thank you guys. <laughs> and uh, you know, now you just pursue you know more family stuff and. You know, do what we do. Hope I get the fifty thousand dollars bonus to help with the house payments. <laughs> That'd be nice. To that point, perhaps Steve, I heard on the way back Dana saying to you over and over again, "That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about." What was he talking about? Well, I tweeted earlier in the week. Uh, he did the video blog that he does, and he, you know, he named the main card, and then the mid card he named, you know, the first fight, the second fight, and then he named. Mike Brown and then skip me and then went to the next fight. So I tweeted, you know, something along the lines of, hey, you may have forgot me, but I'm gonna make sure you remember me from here on out. And then somebody retweeted that yesterday and he wrote back that he loved it. And uh, hopefully I did what I said I was gonna do. It's interesting, it seems like uh, no matter how many wins you get in the UFC, there's an, there's an element of people forgetting about you or overlooking you. Do you feel, what do you have to do for that to not happen for your next fight? You know, me looking 15 like I do, I'm always gonna be <laughs> overlooked. So that doesn't matter to me as long as I keep on doing what I do and keep getting the Ws, that's all that matters. There was a Are point you? when it looked like Mike Brown was ready to retire. I mean, you don't really seem like the type that are, is gonna talk a lot of smack, but in a way, do you, did you retire him tonight, do you think? 
You don't know. Like he could still go. He just got caught with a shot today. You know, he, he might still be hungry, and if he is, I hope he does continue. And I hope he goes on a long winning streak after this. So, are you are you sponsored by broccoli with I, that hat? Um, <laughs> Bravo Fruits, actually. Uh, okay. That's you know the they sponsor me. I also got a lot of other sponsors, but yeah, this is the Eat Me Broccoli, and uh, it's a good hat. Now you were on uh, Jason Mayhem Miller's team on the Ultimate Fighter, right? Are you still in in contact with him? You friendly with him? And do you have an opinion on what's been going on with Jason lately? Nah, I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. You never know what's going on with his life. Uh, I never really got close to Jason. Uh, I mean, I actually love Coach Pizney actually more than anything. So um, I keep in contact with a few of the guys, but not Jason. Eric Koch and Dustin Poirier fighting in a couple weeks. Is that a fight you're looking at? Maybe the winner of that against you, more of a high-profile fight against guys who are strikers. Um, no, it doesn't matter if they give me a striker or ground guy. I'm happy no matter where the fight goes. Uh, as long as they, you know, hopefully give me another fight this year, I'll be happy. I want to follow up on that. Then, are you and Michael Bisping friendly? Do you speak with him a lot? Um, not a lot. I wouldn't say a lot. I tweet him every now and then, and I'm actually shocked when he tweets back. But <laughs> he's like I said, he's a great guy, and uh, you know, hopefully. Uh, I can go down to California and train with him sometime. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you guys.